a brief update on other harbor related issues which we're all interested in. Uh, I have heard as of yesterday, we've gotten two grants, one to continue to uh, finish the engineering for the Parker Avenue boat ramp, mm -hmm. uh, which is good. And then another one to uh, complete the engineering for the government island piers. So oh, Seaport, Seaport has approved both of those grants, which is a good thing. That's great. Uh, Oh, geez. Then do we have a youth okay. component? Um, we can employ some um, job shadowing <laughs> and types. Bridget, Bridget, would you send an email to Sam Wakeman? Do I, shall I resend that to, he's waiting to it. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, uh, do, you, do you have his email? Are you going to send yeah, his email? I'll just, it, uh, get I just it. forwarded uh, your email to him, so he, he'll get it. He'll get it, well. It's the passcode he doesn't have. Well, I, I didn't even need a passcode, so. If, if I can get his email, I can just send him an invite. Okay, there it goes. Thanks. I'm not sure why the, why there were, it, some people were set up requiring passcodes and others mm. were not. I wondered about that. I thought maybe people were panelists versus no. I mean, you know, we have different levels when we give meetings in my office. I just clicked on the one that came through the, through the, uh, yeah. Yeah. so I don't know, maybe you're, maybe it's because I have a, a Zoom account or something. I don't know. I don't know anybody in the face of the earth who doesn't at this point. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay. Well, Sam will be with us. Did you get it, Bridget? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Let me see what happened here. And I sent him your email, so. Okay. Oh, I got it. Got it. Okay. Well, actually, I got an email from you, but it doesn't have his email on it. Oh, wait. Yeah. Wait, I see. Just send it again. Oh, I got it. I can. I got it now. I'll send it to him right now. Since you mentioned the Seaport Economic Development Grants, which part of the, um, do you remember which, um, they had different um, areas you could apply for the grants under? Do you know, do you know which ones those fell under? No. I don't I know. Don't. I'm not sure I remember what they were, what the choices were. But. I don't either. I just know what they were for, and it was for engineering for the Parker Avenue boat ramp and the uh, Government Island piers. Can we, um, as those go, as those move forward, can we keep in mind that those are awesome opportunities to get young people who might be studying engineering involved? Like somebody like Christine Guiney, who's a, who's was doing civil engineering, or some local youth having them. Um, I mean, I think I've mentioned youth opportunities before, and I think people thought I was talking about camp counselors type stuff, but I mean like some serious STEM type apprenticeships so that um, we can give people some really good opportunities that are rich and um, keep them in town. And, and what I suggest is you connect with Michelle Leary, who most of the grant applications go through her, and you could just suggest to her that she put an addendum on for all of your people. That would be the easiest way to do it. It's not my people, it's the town's people that I'm thinking of. I think it, I think it should be for every project that gets municipal money. I think every project that gets That's great. Thank you. a youth uh, component. Can I finish this? Carry on. I, I don't want to continue on too much with CSCR at this point. Thank you. That wasn't CSCR, Tim, and you just interrupted me. I'm here. So just let me finish the session for once, please. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. So thank you, Sam, for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, I'd like to keep this meeting fairly brief. I'm sorry the Harbor uh, Master is not with us because she is involved, has been involved in these discussions. Uh, and a number of us uh, going back almost a year, uh, even prior to that, uh, when we were doing the Harbor Plan, uh, have been uh, looking at the various issues concerning Harbor governance, or I should expand that to say waterways governance because uh, 
in Cohasset, as we all know, there are waterways beyond uh, simply the harbor. And uh, uh, there are a number of issues we've looked at. We've talked to various of us have talked to many of the uh, uh, harbor masters and people involved in uh, harbor and waterways governance in uh, Massachusetts and on the Cape. Uh, and we've gotten quite a bit of information of what works, what doesn't work, uh, what would be appropriate for Cohasset, uh, what might not be, and uh, uh, what really is uh, would constitute uh, best practices for uh, the governance of the uh, uh, various waterways. Uh, Mary Jo and I had a meeting uh, about a week or so ago with uh, Lori. Is uh, Mary Jo joining us tonight? I've, she was invited. Okay. I, I know she was out of town, so I wasn't sure if she's back yet. Okay. So I'm, I'm not sure she, she isn't here yet. So I assume that she has uh, other pressing issues. So sure. uh, anyway, we met with her. We, we did get her input, uh, which I can, uh, I think I can express. Uh, but we did talk about uh, various issues surrounding best practices for governance. The, uh, what I'd like to hear from, uh, from all of you, uh, particularly those of you who have not been uh, actively involved in this uh, recently, <clears throat> is your uh, ideas about how we can improve the governance of both the harbor and the waterways of Cohasset. And let me just put a couple of stakes in the ground. The Harbor Committee at the moment is, uh, has been uh, constituted by bylaw for probably a hundred years in uh, Cohasset. Its jurisdiction is essentially from uh, the, well, you could say Whitehead, but probably the breakwater uh, into the main channel, the cove, and uh, Bailey Creek. That's essentially the governance area, the jurisdiction for the Harbor Committee as it stands. The Harbor Master has further jurisdiction that extends into the Gulf. Uh, and that's the Gulf and also, I should say, Little Harbor. Uh, it, her jurisdiction does not specifically call out the coastal areas of Cohasset, but by assumption, I think you could extend that to be the coastal areas of uh, Cohasset. So the question, one question is, should there be a committee, commission, whatever, that has jurisdiction that includes all of the waterways of Cohasset? That's question number one. Question number two, which is one that I've been wrestling with for several years, frankly, is the current composition of the Harbor Committee. As you well know, the Harbor Committee uh, composition was expanded for the purposes primarily of addressing the, uh, the Harbor Plan and building the Harbor Plan. And I think I agreed to it at the time. I thought it was a good idea. I, we have 11 positions on the Harbor Committee, 10 of which are filled. With the exception of three, they're all uh, people that represent specific interests in the Harbor. And I think that was a very good structure for getting the Harbor Plan done. I think the Harbor Plan is a, is a good plan uh, and I think we should all be happy with it and proud of the work that we did to get there. The question is, is that the pro appropriate composition for a committee that oversees the governance of Cohasset waterways? So with that, uh, I will uh, stop. I'll open it up to uh, questions or opinions or points that uh, people might, might make. Yeah, I'd like to ask a couple of questions on process, Tim, how uh, the committee is going to go forward. I, I presume that um, after we come up with some recommendations or even some views on this, we will then be going to the Harbor Committee to vet it through them. Um, yeah. I presume that that's the next step. 
Yes, oh. you're a sub subcommittee of the Harbor Committee, so it would go to the right. Harbor Committee. Right, okay. Um, the, the, the second question I have, or, or recommendation I have, um, I've, I've been involved in tons and tons of, of, of committees who have tried to put governance structures in place um, in both the state and local level. Um, and one of the, I think, threshold questions are, it shouldn't be who's on it, but what does, do we want it to do? What is the jurisdiction? What is the authority? Because presently, the Harbor Committee is, as we all know, the only reason is the, 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 is the Harbor Committee shall make recommendations to the selectmen and the town meeting concerning the operation of the Harbor. That's it, pure and simple. Um, and and it's, it's interesting to me because every, everyone always misspeaks. They always, they always say that it's to, for the selectmen. Well, it's for the selectmen and the town meeting. But my point of all of this is that what sort of authority or jurisdiction is going to be imbued into this if, if we change the Harbor Committee, if we go toward a direction of another entity, what do we want the entity to do? Will they be adjudicatory? Will they be, will they be setting rates? Will it be, um, or, or is it, will they have some sort of oversight authority on the different, pe the, the different rules and regs of, of the Harbor? Or are they gonna just be, quite frankly, another advisory board? So, I mean, I think before we decide who should be in those slots, for my money to build this, we should we need to decide what it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, first of all, we're we're not at the point of deciding anything, let alone who should be in what slots. Uh, let me say that the bylaw for the Harbor Committee that you just read is a very simple and very straightforward bylaw. Mm -hmm. It simply says it's an advisory committee. Frankly, uh, I would I would I think that is appropriate because. What you also said is that uh, the people on that committee uh, uh, are the, they were, they're there representing their groups. They're, I didn't say that, you said that. <laughs> okay. Well, I said that. Yeah. You're there, essentially you're there appointed by CMI. Uh, uh, Susan is there appointed by CSCR. Right, but I, I also feel that my job, I felt the whole time that my job on the Harbor Committee is to represent the people of Cohasset, not, well, to, well, just, not to just advocate for my organization. I really well, felt like my whole role and all of us had this responsibility to, to think about the greater good and use our experience with, from our various organizations. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate your, your opinion on that. That's terrific. So I think we have, uh, at least uh, we have uh, representative groups on the Harbor Committee. We have uh, two commercial fishermen, one of whom, one space is not uh, filled. We can't find another commercial fisherman to do that. We have one that's on there who has suggested to me that he's not going to renew his application. So that would leave two openings. We have a rec committee who rare, rarely shows up and has also not uh, renewed his application. No, I, I, Tim, I'm familiar with I mean, I've, I've been- okay. So you understand so I, how- I, I, I know that the, 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 the issue- My only point here, my only point here, Lisa, Lisa, is that the current makeup of the Harbor Committee is made up of people who are appointed by their various organizations to represent them. That's why they're- I, 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 would, I would have a discussion with that about that because well, we're all appointed by the selectmen. Um, yeah. to fill this, but, you know, we, I think the bigger discussion about, you know, the pros and cons of the Harvard Committee should include, you know, a bigger group of people, but for our purposes, for our, you know, our subcommittee purposes, um, I'd rather go to what do we want out of whatever committee we have. If we maintain the prior committee, we, we have a new committee, what, what is the sense of what, what functions do we have to fulfill? What do you suggest that be? My recommendation is, is that it would be um, an advisory committee. I don't think we should be diluting the, the power of the selectmen um, to, to make certain. Totally agree. I think we all agree. Yeah. Um, and, and I think perhaps, you know, beside you could have, you can enumerate like you frequently do when you're creating boards, people with certain expertises, not so much what an entity they belong to, a club they belong to, but you want people at the table who have certain expertise to help a conversation go, go on and okay. help the town 
specifically the chief operating officers of the town, the selectmen, to, to make um, knowledgeable, knowledgeable decisions on issues surrounding the harbor. Okay. Anybody else? Did, did everybody get a copy of this draft uh, st uh, statement of, it's a, you know, the mission statement for the Waterways Commission? Because I think it yep. addresses a lot of these issues. Yep. But who, who, I'm not sure who, is this Mary Jo's draft? I'm not sure. Yeah, Mary Jo drafted it. I, I'm sorry? Yeah, Mary Jo, uh, Tim, Mary Jo and I drafted that. Oh, okay. I mean, I think everybody, we should probably, you know, just, I think it uh, does a pretty decent job of covering your questions, you know, at a very high level. It doesn't dig down into the detail, but I think it gives you a pretty good sense of what, um, you know, people were thinking about. Is everybody familiar with that? Yeah, I'm just opening it now. Yeah, okay. Do you want to share it on your screen, um, Jack? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, Tim, I have to have the host, I think, to do it. Yeah, I need to, I need to be the host to share this. Uh, no, you, no, you don't. You should be able to share it. I can't. Without it's being blocked. the host. It's blocked. Wait a second. Make host. Okay, you're now the host, Jack. We didn't hear you. You're muted. Can people see that? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty small. <laughs> All right, let me try. I'm going to go to one. Yeah. Hold on. How's that? Could you put it on one page view? It might make it a little bigger. Yeah, so I have to figure out how to do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we old ladies here. <laughs> yes, I'm handicapped. Handicapped. Okay. Maybe, uh, hold on. You can do it up there. Navigation page, maybe? Uh, let me, uh, here, how's that? Oh, there we go. Can you zoom it up a little bit? Um, yeah, I can. It's better. Maybe I can make the screen bigger. Okay. Thank you. How's that? Much better. Thank you. Okay. And I'll just roll it. Everybody can read it. Tell me when you're done and I'll roll it. Okay. Well, why don't you walk us through it, Jack? If you, you were, you know, help put it together, it might be helpful to have you walk us through it. Okay. So the purpose of this, we were all talking about how best to approach this new idea. And we all felt it was Sam, um, Tim, Mary Jo, and myself. We all thought that if we talked at a very high level what this structure could potentially be, it might help everybody, you know, think about how this whole process might work. And we were really and, and when did when did this process occur? I mean, did you do this over the summer? I mean, because I don't remember seeing. And we did, we did it in June, the end of June. Uh, it, it took a okay. week or so to do it. So the idea was, let's just start with a clean slate and talk about what it is we need in terms of governance. And, you know, we've all been talking about this notion of all navigable waterways, right? That's, that's a concept and a term that most of the towns use to describe, you know, what they're going to manage. Situate does it, Marshfield does it, the Cape does it. So we came up with this Waterways Commission and, you know, we, we define the purpose, the mission, and the vision. So, you know, the first couple of paragraphs just say Cohasset is complex and it has many issues. The purpose of the commission was to advise the Board of Selectmen on matters pertaining to the responsible manage management of all navigable waterways and the infrastructure and policies that support those waterways. And, you, you know, I... I think that's a pretty good encapsulation of what the purpose was. The mission is to provide a forum for the coordination, discussion, and dissemination of all information and actions that have an impact on Cohasset's navigable waterways, and to be a resource for and an advisor to the selectmen and the town manager in these matters. 
So it's fairly restrictive. You know, it's, I think, pretty clear what it does. Uh, and, and so far, there's not a lot of overlap with the harbor. I mean, this is more about big picture stuff, how you manage the issues, you know, how do you, how do you bring resources to some of the problems we have? And then, you know, what? What are we trying to get done? We envision a navigable waterway system that is free flowing with good water quality and healthy ecosystems that are managed and protected to provide environmental, social, and economic benefits for all members of our community. This will be accomplished by engaging a strong, effective community of dedicated partners working together to oversee Cohasset's navigable waterways. And then we went to the next page and we just talked about what the goals could potentially be. And remember, this is just us putting a draft yeah, out. Honestly, of Jack, I'm, I'm really taken aback because you're saying that this whole process went on um, that I was not included in. And so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of dumbstruck, you know. Um, um, so I'm trying to follow along here and I read this draft, but I, you know, I thought it was maybe a draft that came out of Mary Jo. I didn't realize there was a whole deliberative process with a group that I'm supposed to be a member of, but it didn't, it wasn't part of. So. so let me just say this, there was no conspiracy. I mean, literally somebody, I made the suggestion that we should have a big picture view of what we're doing so that we can have a full discussion about what this should be. So we can talk about what the greater good of Cohasset is, independent of individual interests. So this was so everybody on the the this subcommittee was involved except uh, Susan and I. Uh, uh, we had a discussion. Or, uh, there was no conspiracy not to have people involved. I'm not suggesting this conspiracy. I'm just trying to so, find. Yes. I'm trying to understand the process, not, Jack. You were not included, but it wasn't a deliberative process. People had nobody was taking any action. Nobody, nobody was doing anything. This was my attempt at defining what a first step could potentially be. And by the way, Lisa, we all had research assignments they were doing and reporting back to the group, which, uh, you know, everybody was doing that I'm aware of. Uh, some people did, some people didn't. So uh, this was... A <laughs> <laughs> this is not a research assignment, Tim. This was this is a this is a draft that the that only a portion of this subcommittee had. Uh, no, it was sent out. It was sent out. You got it. Everybody got it. It's a it's a draft. And and the process uh, the process would have been. All right, just just and, continue. No, no, no. Well, listen, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm. This is important because the process. It is important. Been, the process would have been the same whether you were at the meeting or not. People asked. Oh, this was a meeting. <laughs> I was asked to draft a mission statement for a potential waterways commission. I went away, I did a draft, it was presented to everybody, there were a couple of tweaks to it, and then we went to step two, which was to broaden the audience to look at this document and comment on the document and give feedback. So That's we're trying we're, we're trying to do the right thing here. We're That's trying to create a structure around a conversation that needs to be had in this town. It needs to be had in this town and it needs to be done separate from the politics of all this. This is an attempt, this is a piece of work that was done by people without getting paid to further the conversation around good governance for all the navigable har harbor waterways. Now we're sitting here talking to a larger audience saying, okay, what do you think? And I don't think it's productive to sit here and talk about, you know, whether or not this person was included or not included. Everybody can be included. I'm happy to put everybody on this. But at some point, somebody's got to do the work. The work has to get done, and we got to move things forward, or not. I've registered my complaint, so okay. let's continue. And, and going forward, um, Mr. Chairman, I would appreciate if we're going to have a deliberative process on a draft, I would like to be included as the one of the two people who are supposed to make up the quorum for the, the, the Harvard Committee on this subcommittee. Thank you. So the goals of this committee are one, promote wise stewardship and use of the natural resources of Cohasset's navigable waterways and its watershed through public education and transparency and planning around the environmental, social and economic priorities. Two, support and facilitate stakeholder engagement to develop and implement an adaptive resource management plan for Cohasset waterways. So parts of that, you know, what would that look like? You're gonna facilitate and support and provide technical assistance to key shareholders in addressing waterways issues, management planning and funding. Develop and implement resource <coughs> protection, infrastructure enhancement and ecological enhancement projects 
that balance the commercial needs of the waterways with the overall health of the system. Promote community understanding of the waterway ecosystem and seek solutions to climate and water resource issues through demonstration projects and scientific research that shows how Cohasa can manage the waterways with fewer negative impacts. And finally, provide support and coordination of our shared watershed resource management responsibilities with Hull and Situate and develop policies that more effectively address the needs of all parties. Mm -hmm. And three, uh, function as the Selectman's Advisory for all matters related to the governance and management of Cohasset's waterways, advocating for long-term planning that will enhance <coughs> the waterways as an aesthetic, economic, and recreational resource. And then the structure was seven members appointed by the Selectman to three-year terms. Um, and the members elect a chairperson and a vice chairperson every year. You meet once a month. It's, it's that simple. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. All right, any comments from uh, anyone? Well, I'd be interested in the, the discussion that the subcommittee of the subcommittee had in putting this together and, um, and why you're happy with this draft. Well, <laughs> First of all, Lisa, you have been included. I, you know, why, why you weren't at some of these other meetings, I don't know. We scheduled this meeting specifically around your schedule. We're doing everything we can to include you. So if you missed a meeting or you missed some of the communication, I apologize. We'll try to keep you involved. Now, some of the, some of the other meetings you were not involved in. And I, uh, the meeting I had with Mary Jo and Lori, and Lori's been trying to come in here, by the way. Uh, she had the same problem with password. I need Lori's oh. email address and I can send her an invite. Thank you. Uh, I, you know, I, if we, if we uh, missed you on some of these things, uh, it's not, we can't include, I can't say that we're gonna be perfect going forward. We'll do the best we can. This is a draft that a number of people have seen. I think you've seen it prior to this meeting. Uh, it is a simply a draft for discussion. And if I think as I preface the, the meeting uh, here, the real issue is number one, do we need another committee that uh, has jurisdiction over all the waterways <coughs> of Cohasset? Do we change? the jurisdiction of the current Harbor Committee uh, to have jurisdiction? Is the makeup of the current Harbor Committee appropriate for overseeing the waterways of Cohasset? These are the questions that are being asked. None of them have been answered. So there, there we have. This is supposed to be for a discussion, not a debate on whether or not it's an appropriate document. So any other uh, comments from people? Uh, do we think this is a good idea? Do we think there's more work to be done? Uh, do we like what we have? Does everybody say, let's live happily ever after with what we've got? My opinion is just so you have it, if we keep the Harbor Committee with the, the makeup the way it is, number one, it will be very difficult, <laughs> not impossible to have a quorum for the next meeting. Number two, I think that uh, the Harbor Committee uh, uh, charge going forward is very different than it has been for the last three years, which is putting together the Harbor Plan. The next charge for the Harbor Committee is twofold. One is the operations of the Harbor, and two is the implementation of the Harbor Plan. So I, I really, I have my doubts that the current uh, structure of the Harbor Committee is, uh, is appropriate for those two issues. I'm happy to hear other points of view. Timo, do you have a list of things that are, I'm gonna use the word dysfunctional or not working in the current Harbor Committee setup? Well, number one is the difficulty of getting a quorum. And that's because of the designation of members who are to be on that committee? 
Uh, well, I'm not sure so much if it's a designation or is it, uh, Lisa and Susan both said that they are, they're there not representing necessarily an organization, but they're there representing the harbor. Uh, so I, I think it's either- Jim, I, that, that wasn't a quote from me. That was from Susan. Um, but in the past, I have- Thank you, Your Honor. I stand corrected. So it's probably the, uh, so it's probably more the individuals that have been, have been assigned uh, to it than, uh, than it is the, you know, than the, the, the uh, where they are coming from. So, uh, and I'm not sure what the process is with each organization, how it, uh, how they go about finding somebody to go on that committee. But that's you have to what remember I, that I, those appointees question. were not the, the appointees were not just uh, an appointee from the committee. They also had to be appointed by the selectmen. Um, they had yeah. to be appointed by the selectmen. But, yes, but of course. They, so. Normally, they do take the recommendation of uh, a group. Um, normally, they do. Ask that some of the other uh, Sam, if you're asking about the dysfunction of the committee, um, I think the problem is sometimes scheduling. I think sometimes it's engaging some of the members. Um, I think because we had sort of a limited focus of finishing the uh, harbor plan, that I don't think many of the members are engaged. I'd say maybe three or four of us are actually engaged in this process. Um, and I believe that you know Tim has done a great job fashioning and, and getting this the harbor committee uh, process through um, the report. Um, but I think going forward you know we have tried to make subcommittees like this one and others um but their people have to take ownership and they haven't um, which is very difficult to ask and ask and ask and ask who's interested in what and have crickets so i, I know that's one of the challenges of the committee as opposed to having a lot more structure of having people be okay you're on the harbor committee you're also on this subcommittee like normal boards and structures are. If someone is appointed to the Harbor Committee and they don't want to take ownership and don't want to contribute and don't want to participate, can they be removed and replaced with someone who's generally interested in looking at all the problems and trying to solve them? I, I would imagine that would be one of the things that the, you would have to bring to the attention of the selectmen that this is something that you um, you need to look at the appointment process. Currently, the, the way it happens is the, uh, uh, the specific, with the exception of the three at-large members, the organization puts forth a uh, recommendation for a member on the Harbor Committee, and the selectmen generally approve that. There is, as far as I know, there's no process for removing anybody from the Harbor Committee. The, the, the selectmen can remove anybody they want. I don't know if well, they, they can. Do. I suppose that yeah. both the chair of the Harbor Committee can ask the, the selectmen to remove somebody. The problem is with 11 members, <laughs> if you remove somebody, you already have <laughs> one empty spot and you have several that don't show up. Uh, you start removing people. You, you can't have a quorum. If you can't have a quorum, you can't have a meeting. If you can't have a meeting, you can't have a deliberation. If you can't have deliberation, you can't get anything done. So that's, that's part of the problem. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. So if, um, I know, I, th I think my attendance has um, not, I haven't been a cause of lack of quorum. You may have other issues with me other than that one. Um, but I, I haven't seen too many fishermen lately. Um, and I'm wondering if we've, or lately, I haven't seen anybody lately. Um, but I want to make sure that if we have a meeting that's supposed to include fishermen and harbor masters, that we respect their schedule that may be different than the nine to five schedule of people who work in offices. So if we want their involvement, we need to schedule meetings accordingly to respect their time as well. Yeah. And also, we, 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 you know, on our website, it says our meetings are at 7 p.m. at night for, for the, um, you know, the public. And we have... Um, a lot of times gone earlier than that and god knows we all don't want to be meeting at 10 o'clock at night but we may need to look at that going forward no matter what the configuration of this group is okay can we get back to the uh agenda here which is really do we do we continue to move forward on harbor governance or are we going to just 
uh, say we're happy with harbor governance the way it is, and we have no changes we want to make, no recommendations. We want to just keep it the way it is and live happily ever after. That's my question. Live without the sarcasm, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, um, I think that um, I, I think I'm very interested in looking at a new configuration because I don't think the present configuration is optimum. Um, I'm, I'm very interested, and I'm not being snarky here. I'm dead serious. I would like to know what Sam's opinion is and what Tim, your opinion is, and why you structured it the way you did, um, because you know. I know we looked at all those different harbors and we looked at different models, but what is attractive to you in this? Were you addressing that too, Lisa? Whoever worked on the draft. Well, I, there were a number of us that, that worked on the draft and Mary Jo has been trying to come in. I'm sorry she's not here. Uh, wait a minute. Here comes somebody. Well, I'll let him in. Okay. Yeah, you're the... Okay. Uh, well, one sec. We, we've been working on this for uh, for some time, and it what really this is uh, is a uh, it's an amalgamation of what we would consider. I think what what people who were working on it anyway were aware of it. Uh, best practices for uh, uh, waterways governance. I mean, no, and, and I, I, I understand, you know, we had all those meetings, we talked about different models from different towns, but what, you know, what brought you to, to liking this structure? Why seven people? Why, you know, was there a reason behind that? Seven people? I'll take a shot at that. Um, you know, an optimal structure for a, a board, you, you know, if you want a functional board that makes decisions, and it's relatively stable from political influence. A five member board is optimal. A seven member board here is probably necessary because there's so much work to be done. This is a board that has a fairly large scope of work. And I think you need more, more hands. I think you need more hands to do the work. And again, it's you know pretty complex, a lot of issues, a lot of moving parts. You could try for five, seven is probably the biggest you could make this and still make it work. You go to nine and things get way out of hand. In general, uh, groups of, you wanna keep odd number groups. You don't wanna do even number groups. Odd number groups keep you from having tiebreakers and, and deadlocks. Uh, nine tends not to work. 11 never works. Uh, you know, five is optimal, seven's okay. But it takes a good strong chairman who can manage the seven to, to get that group to work well. Um, and there's, there are examples of groups like that in town. I think, uh, I think capital budget seven. I think most groups are five in town. There are a couple that are a little bit bigger. Maybe alternative energy is a little bit bigger. And they've got a strong chairman and they work well to together as a group so it works well. The other thing about seven is that you need four for a quorum, which is good. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Yeah. Mike. I mean, if we don't like seven, <laughs> what number should it be? <laughs> I don't oh, have an opinion on the number. I just, I just pick an uneven number. Yeah, for both. Yep. Three is too few. Do you want five? Do you want seven? Do you want nine? What not do you nine, think? Not three. Not three. Not three. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's one thing we consider either five or five or seven without any question. Mike, you had a, you had a comment. You can't hear you. I'm off mute. You hear me? No, you, you're you're muffled. Um, can you hear me? Bad speaker. Can you go join Lisa? No. Oh. <laughs> A different house. Okay. No, he's just upstairs. All right, he's upstairs. You're downstairs. It might be the bandwidth that sometimes happens. Yeah. Probably you're both on the same Wi-Fi. That's probably the problem. Yeah. Now, when we went into COVID, we pumped it up hugely because of both of our jobs having to constantly be on Zoom. So it shouldn't be the Wi-Fi. I think it's probably his speaker. But why don't we continue until he gets settled? Anyway, okay. Susan, did you have a point? I, yeah, I did. I have a question. Um, this is not a contentious thing. I'm just asking a question because I just want to know. Um, so um, just because we work with um, 
watersheds. Um, why did um, you all decide to go with navigable waters? Um, what were the pros and cons of, of going uh, upstream in the watershed from that that you thought about? I, I you know, I'm just, just curious. Uh, there are just a lot of issues that nobody had. These are gaps in, in town governance. And there are a lot of issues for the river and other places that aren't addressed anywhere. And so when, when there are issues, nobody knows where to go with them. You know, so in Situate and Marshfield and the Cape, everybody goes to the Waterways Commission with their issues. And it, it really becomes a forum and a clearinghouse for information for everybody who has interests in the, uh, you know, in the, in the waterways. So again, it's, it's trying to create a structure that's flexible, but comprehensive. So upstream and, people would go to the Conservation Commission because it's wetlands, it's marsh, it's something right. that's wet-ish. Uh, exactly. You. Mike, are you with us? No? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Why don't you put your question in the chat, Mike? And you can... Yeah, you can, you can chat with us. And by the way, Bridget, thank you for staying with us. We still don't have the Harbor uh, Master or Mary Jo. Do you know where they're coming? I mean, have they flagged you that they're in? Well, they sent me a, an email saying they were trying to get there, and I... Isn't 0863, isn't that Lori? I'm yeah. here. Yep. Oh, Lori, you're here. Yeah. Oh, Okay. Uh, I sent, well, I sent Lori an email and I sent Mary Jo, was it Mary Jo? I sent her an email too, okay. an invite. All right. So we've got Lori. Lori, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So uh, any other uh, comments on this? Where should we go with this? Is there uh, more work to be done? Should we think about it? Uh, circulate it again to a broader audience, maybe to the Harbor Committee, uh, and then come back again and uh, consider the or deliberate on what we're going to do here. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to circulate to the full Harbor Committee, and I'd like to have, um, you know, Tim. Maybe you can brief them on the 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 pro, you know, the, the thought process and, and all the information that we got in from the various models across the state. Um, and then I know Laurie had a different view. Maybe she'd want to express that in, as, as part of a, as a, an official member of the committee too. And then, you know, we can take that information in and then come back as the governance subcommittee and, and, um, and make a recommendation. And it would, doesn't have to be on a elongated timeline. Okay. Laurie, do you have any comments? I, I don't know when you came in or what you've heard of this conversation. Can you hear me? Yep. You can hear me? Okay. Uh, I just came in probably about eight minutes ago. Um, so I don't know what has transpired. I'm sorry. I couldn't. I had no luck uh, logging on. I don't know what the problem was. But... Okay. Um, I guess I'm in favor of keeping the Harbor Committee because this is a very small diverse harbor um, and by having the harbor committee members there's a lot of diversity each group is represented and I think that's important because each group is very strong within the harbor and I think just to have five or seven members on another committee that um, they won't get their proper representation okay so I, I don't think you have to get rid of, I mean, I'm just going to put this out. This is my own thought. This isn't really addressing the Harbor Committee. And I think there's room in here to have the Harbor Committee and then just have this, you know, the Waterways Commission is working on all navigable, har you know, issues, right? It's, it, you don't have to get rid of the Harbor Committee. Yeah, I think that overlay would be, would be um, redundant and unnecessary and create conflict. You know, not if you know, not if you having, define what the mission of the Harbor Committee was. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what the mission of the Harbor Committee is. I don't know. You know, I'd love to hear, I'd love to see a document like this for the Harbor Committee because I'm not sure beyond getting the Harbor Plan done, what the 
what the purpose of it is. You know, I mean, I know what it is. It's there to re represent the stakeholders in the harbor, but I don't. Uh, you know, know something. I, I and and I just want to have a healthy debate about that, Jack. I mean, if you read, I'm sorry if this is a, you know occupational hazard and being an attorney. If the only charge of the harbor committee is what the bylaw says, most recently it was used for this particular application, which was laudable and helpful because it was a group in place that we could that we, the town could you know access and not always to the <laughs> to the easiest way of doing it, but. The charge of the Harbor Committee is only what it says in the bylaw, to give recommendations to the selectmen and to the town meeting on issues of the Harbor. That's how broad it is. And, and I agree with you, there should be maybe a, a, an amendment to, to that, if in fact we keep that bylaw. But, I, but, the, 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 but everyone keeps like uh, imbuing it with, you know, it's for this, it's for that. That's not what the law says. Maybe it's been used for that recently, but the only charge is what the, the statute says. There's no other uh, controlling authority. I totally agree with exactly what you said. You're absolutely right. And so part of this document is to speak to a lot of other issues we have with the waterways in town. I mean, there are all sorts of issues with Black Rock Beach and there's nobody there to address it. There are all sorts of issues with boundaries between Hall and Situate that go beyond just boating, right? I mean, there, there are all sorts of issues around Musquashkit and the river flowing into Cohasset Harbor, and there's no place to talk about those issues either. There are people that individually work on the issues and try to work hard at coming up with solutions, but again, there's no way to track the history of that and create context and a place where people can talk about all these issues. The Harbor Committee does one piece of it, it doesn't do all of it. And that's you know part of what this document's about. And so now that I know that I'm supposed to actually advocate for CSCR, um, I can point out that um, the place that people have been talking about this is the state of the harbor that we run. Um, yes. So that is a time where we've discussed Musquashkit. We haven't recently been down at Straits Pond or Rocky Beach, but we have talked, certainly talked about the Gulf River and we try to bring stakeholders together. We try to get panelists who will speak um, and help inform our, our town and we invite pe everyone to come um, so we get this that's terrific. It, and CSR does a wonderful job. Thank Just you. Interrupted me again. I'm well, sorry for saying anything. Off, I will... point here, Susan. We don't want to spend a, a, a whole issue talking about CSCR. We know that you represent CSCR and you do a great job of doing it. What we're talking about is whether we should either expand the uh, jurisdiction of the Harbor Committee or have a separate Harbor or waterways commission. That is the that is the discussion here. So please keep focused. So we don't we're not. You, here. you mean please keep quiet is what I'm hearing. I will keep I'm quiet. Not saying that you're certainly not quiet, and I'm I haven't muted you yet. <laughs> so please just keep focused, would you please, on what the issue is. So I, I personally uh, think it's the way for everybody to get what they want out of this document and have a better sense of governance of all this. It just is going to take a little bit of work and everybody sharing and putting it all together in a way that makes sense for the town, right? It, it's got to make sense. You know, your, your, Lisa, your point about the Harbor Committee maybe having overlap with the Waterways Commission is on target and true. And I, but I do think there are ways to address all these issues if we can have, you know, a structured discussion around what it should look like. I mean, there are, there are clearly policy problems and issues that aren't coordinated, you know, and it'll, if you just have a Harbor Commission set up the way it is today, I, I'm not sure that you're ever going to be able to, to encapsulate all those other issues. Yeah. CSCR I, I, should be I, a part of this, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're experts, right? They, they're yeah. the biggest experts we have in town. There's yeah. a way to make this all work. Um, I just don't think anyone should assume when anybody feels about this draft right now. I mean, I, I want to look at it more. I want to look back at the, at the documentation that we, we uh, put together during the course of those many governance meetings that we had in the mornings. Um, and, you know, the, the, if, if we schedule a, a Harvard committee meeting next week, the week after, giving people sufficient time to schedule it um, and to be present um, and telling them how the importance of the meeting, um, I think, you know, we could go forward. And okay. Well, let's do this. Let's, 
let's have another uh, governance meeting. We'll, we'll send this out to the governance uh, subcommittee and the people that are interested in it. I'll send it out to the whole Harbor Committee, but let's have a governance uh, meeting uh, because we're the ones that have been uh, involved in this for several months. And if we can come to a consensus, uh, then we'll have a, a greater Harbor Committee meeting. If we were to have a Harbor Committee meeting now, uh, I think <laughs> I think we wouldn't make a lot of progress. So if we can come to a consensus, perhaps that's the first step. Yes, Mike. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I originally wanted to answer your first question on what did what do the people on the call think about the document. But before I do that, I just want to make a couple observations on how this meeting has progressed. Um, I've learned um, on my participation on advisory committee um, that the only way to get consensus is to hear thoroughly all sides, including people who are unhappy. And it takes a lot of patience. Um, if you're opposed or contrary or disagree to actually hear people out all the way through. Um, so I would, I would recommend that you adopt the stance that to build consensus, there's going to be a lot of listening. Um, and I think everybody has to let the heat, heat go down, let the motor cool down and, and get to what's really important, which is your points of view. Um, what I'm also hearing is that there are members of this committee who feel that they have not been included. Now, I understand completely the desire on the part of those folks who put together this document that let's get something done. And unfortunately, in a town committee, I think you have to be totally, you have to bend over backwards to include people, even if you're starting something that seems small and simple, so that you can gain consensus when it comes time to work, work these things out. So I would also advise or recommend that for any work that's going to take place that you do let everybody know, even though you feel, oh, how am I going to get this done if I've got to get everybody together? Well, you have to get everybody together to gain consensus. Uh, and it's actually a smart way of going, of, of getting everyone together, hearing everybody out. If they're unhappy, get to the root cause of the unhappiness and deal with it and then move on. Having said that, um, I think this is, at first glance, at first hearing, I think this is a terrific idea. I think it's trying to address real problems. And that, in my view, is where you start. What is the problem that we're trying to solve for? and then you come up with your solutions or, or recommendations. So I, I think this is um, excellent work, although I have not read it, so <laughs> you can fault me for that, but I would very much like to read this. And Tim, I think your recommendation to give everyone a chance to read it and come back together and sort of, let's start again. Let's start again with everybody being um, at the same place on the same page and have a good look at this. So I'm glad you can hear me now. Okay, and, uh, thank you, Mike. Yep. Any other thoughts? Otherwise, we'll uh, I will send out that document to uh, everybody to consider, and uh, we will reconvene. Hey, Sue, why don't we pick a date now? Uh, I can't do that because my my calendar is not uh, not here. You can send me send out some uh, uh, possibilities, Lisa. All right. Why don't I send it to this group? Yeah, send out some possibilities and uh, and we'll respond. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you. I'm sorry, Bridget, I haven't met you before. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, usually we're a lot more fun. <laughs> I work at the library. I'm just helping out today. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us. Lori, I'm sorry we can't see you, but thank you for being here. Mary Jo, I don't know if you made it, but uh, we'll make sure you're involved in the next one. A question. Um, Bridget, are you taking me, uh, minutes or notes on the meeting? Is that No, I was only told just to set it up and let everyone in. Normally, I wouldn't have hung out for so long, but since people are having issues getting in. So I, I was 
the, the goal was I was not even supposed to attend. All right. If anybody would like to volunteer to submit the minutes, that would be terrific. Otherwise, you know, I will yeah. put the basic minutes in. But it's, it's record. It's recorded. Um, oh, good. So if, if anybody needs, if want, if you want to know how to do that, I know how to do it. It is recording. So, and I don't know what to do with it. So, I'll give the. <laughs> uh, and then you can download it, Jack. I mean, you... I, I don't know what to do. So, if somebody <laughs> can tell me, I, I'd be happy to take your advice. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe you can download it. Is that correct, Susan? Yeah, and it comes in two forms. It comes in, uh, I think. If I recall correctly, it comes in at um, dot wave, which is audio only, and then four, which is the whole thing. And it's not. It may, even do, it may even do voice or print, but I don't know if we have. If that. you need. Um, so I'm going to give the hosting function back to Tim because I think it's going to stay with Tim. Okay. Is it Tim's or is it the town's? No, all I'm going to do is leave. Oh, okay. So I'm going to give it to the any town. More right? Further comments. We're going to adjourn. <laughs> so it, it is going on, to I can tell you how to do it. I'm be stuck. Whoever ends up with the responsibility. Wow. That was amazing. If anybody would like assistance, I'm offering assistance. I'm not trying to be contentious. I'm just saying I know how to do it and I've done it. Okay. So the town is a co-host. My guess is it's going to stay with the town. I think it probably does. Okay. And, and maybe 